Glutathione declines during aging. To illustrate that point, let's take a look at data from three different studies. So first, when looking at glutathione, GSH, on the y-axis plotted against age, starting from 21-year-olds up to older than 61, we can see a 50% glutathione reduction during aging. Uh, similarly, in study number two, again, glutathione on the y-axis plotted against age, in this case, starting with glutathione concentrations in blood, again, all these data are in blood, from birth, we can see a significant 15% glutathione reduction when starting from newborns up to about 70 years. And then in study number three, again, glutathione on the y-axis, we can see that there's about a 33% glutathione reduction when comparing the youngest group, 20 to 29, with people older than 60. So with that in mind, can restoring glutathione levels in older adults improve health? So to optimize glutathione, first we need, we'll need to know what it's made of, and that's what we can see here. So glutathione, as shown there, is a tripeptide, which means it's made of three amino acids, cysteine, glutamic acid, or glutamate, and glycine. Now, although I, I won't go into that data here, I've presented this in an earlier video, glycine and cysteine levels decline during aging, and if you missed that video, it'll be in the right corner. So when considering that glycine and cysteine levels decline during aging, uh, strategies aimed at replenishing glycine and cysteine, or more specifically, N-acetylcysteine as a source of cysteine, may uh, restore glutathione and potentially improve health-related outcomes in older adults. So in this study, high-dose glycine plus N-acetylcysteine was supplemented to older adults, 71 to 80 years old, and this was a relatively small study of 16 people, so actually only half that, eight of the 71 to 80 year olds got the glycine plus N-acetylcysteine and the other eight were a young control group. And this was a study that lasted for 24 weeks. And without going through all of the individual data, just going through the highlights, we can see that glycine plus N-acetylcysteine supplementation in glutathione deficient older adults improved glutathione deficiency, which because glutathione is an antioxidant, it reduced oxidative stress. With reduced oxidative stress, we should expect to see reduced uh, genomic damage or oxidative damage to DNA, which is what they saw. But it also reduced markers of inflammation and insulin resistance, improved mitochondrial function, uh, reduced markers of endothelial dysfunction, improved body composition, including reduced fat mass. It improved muscle strength and increased exercise capacity. And last but not least, it improved cognition. Now, interestingly, I started making this video last Sunday. And on Wednesday of this week, similar, da similar data was just published in a new study by the same research group. So we can see the title there, and it was published on 8-17, so Wednesday of this week. And if you're interested in checking out that paper, it'll, it'll be in the video's description. So in that study, they once again used high-dose glycine plus N-acetylcysteine, and more specifically, they used 100 milligrams of each glycine and N-acetylcysteine per kilogram of body weight. So for someone that's around uh, 154 pounds, 70 kilograms, which is in the ballpark of my body weight, that would mean 7 grams each of glycine plus N-acetylcysteine. So they expanded the age range in this, video, uh, in this uh, study. In the earlier study, it was 71 to 80. In this study, it was 61 to 80. They increased their sample size by just a little bit. It included 23 people uh, relative to the uh, smaller sample size of the earlier study. And note that of those 23 people, 11 of them uh, were the older adults that, well, actually both groups, the, uh, the older adults, there were 11, and then there were 12 younger subjects. Everybody got uh, glycine plus N-acetylcysteine. I'm only going to present the data in older adults, though, because there were no major changes for the young adults taking uh, N-acetylcysteine uh, plus uh, glycine. So this study was also a bit shorter, uh, 16 weeks when compared with their earlier study, which was 24 weeks. And then just going through the highlights, we can see that uh, glycine plus N-acetylcysteine impacted many of the same things that the earlier study did, so I won't go through each of them individually. But then they also, it was also shown to improve uh, markers that they didn't go through in the first study, including markers of cellular senescence, improved markers related to stem cells and mitophagy, and reduced blood pressure. So when considering these two randomized controlled trials in older adults, glutathione rest restoration may be a promising approach for improving aging-related outcomes in people that are, or most specifically, older adults that are deficient or that have age-related or somehow related, uh, somehow a deficit in their blood levels of glutathione, whether it's age-related or some other uh, condition that's leading to reduced glutathione. All right, so that's not the purpose of this video, to rehash old data. I want to know, can glutathione restoration increase lifespan? So we haven't yet covered that on this channel. And then also, do centenarians have relatively higher or lower levels of glutathione? So first, let's take a look at the lifespan data. And as you can see by the title, 
I've given away the story, uh, glycine plus N-acetylcysteine supplementation extends lifespan in mice. So here we're looking at that data, and we've got two groups of mice, mice that were fed the regular diet in red, and there were 16 of those mice, including eight males and eight females, and the genotype was C57 black 6 j which if you've watched my other videos or more recent videos, that animal genotype was also used in some of the calorie restriction, fasting, and circadian alignment studies. And then in green, we've got the mice that were supplemented with the regular diet plus glycine plus N-acetylcysteine, and again, also 16 mice, eight males and eight females. And then supplementation was started at 65 weeks, and they used a dose of glycine and N-acetylcysteine that will be similar to what was used in their human studies. So 1.6 milligrams of each glycine and N-acetylcysteine per gram of food. All right, so what was the impact on survival? So for that, we look at median survival, which is the time when half the colony has died and half is still alive. So that's eight mice for the control group as shown there. And then we can see a significant increase for median lifespan in the glycine plus N-acetylcysteine supplemented groups, 24%. 129 weeks versus 104 for controls. Now, this study did have some limitations, though. So 16 versus 16 mice is a, is a relatively small study for evaluating uh, survival. And for more information on that, check out my recent calorie restriction, fasting, and circadian alignment videos, which included more than 40 mice per group. Not 16 per group, more than 40 per group. And also, they didn't report uh, how much food was consumed or body weights of these animals at any point during their lifespan. And that's important because if the animals that were supplemented with glycine plus N-acetylcysteine even were on a small but mild calorie restriction, we know that that can extend lifespan. So did the supplemented animals eat less as a potential explanation for these effects? We don't know. But this study also had strengths, including gl uh, glutathione restoration in multiple tissues, which is what we can see here. So this is heart, liver, and kidney levels of glutathione, and we've got micromoles of glutathione per uh, grams of heart, liver, or kidney going from left to right. And then you can see on the x-axis, we've got RGSH. The R stands for reduced. So that's the version of uh, glutathione that can combat or uh, can ameliorate oxidative stress because when glutathione is reduced, uh, actually, when glutathione is oxidized, it's in its GSSG form, and it's not going to contribute to uh, reducing or helping to reduce oxidative stress. So in terms of the form that we're interested in, it's RGSH. All right, so when comparing young versus old, blue versus the red, we can see that, uh, that the young animals had much higher levels of glutathione in their heart, liver, and kidney when compared with the old animals. But then when old animals were supplemented with glycine plus N-acetylcysteine, we can see a rebound where glutathione levels were restored uh, it, for each of those tissues. So from this, we can conclude that the lifespan extending effect of glycine plus N-acetylcysteine supplementation is associated with glutathione restoration in multiple tissues. All right, so what about the data in centenarians? Are glutathione levels relatively higher or lower in centenarians? Now, we saw earlier that glutathione levels decline during aging. So from that, we'd predict that centenarians should have lower levels uh, since glutathione declines during aging. So is that true? So here we're looking at blood levels of glutathione, and we've got two groups. One that's close to centenarian with an average age of 97. And uh, this is, there were 116 subjects in that category. And then their offspring that had an average age of 67 years, and there were 232 of those subjects. And what we can see is that the centenarians had an average, a higher average blood glutathione level when compared with the, the group that was 30 years younger, such that the fold change, they had about a 50% relatively higher level of glutathione when compared with the younger group. And this data was statistically significant. As you can see, the p-value and the false discovery rate, FDR, were both less than 0.05. So from this, we can conclude that being able to maintain relatively high glutathione may be important for longevity, especially when considering the animal data and the RCT data in those two separate studies that showed uh, a whole bunch of health-related effects for glutathione restoration uh, on all of those different health-related effects. All right, so... Uh, Last but not least, note that for each of glutathione's component amino acids, they're also relatively higher in centenarians, which may be a potential explanation why glutathione levels are higher in the close to centenarian group when compared with the 67-year-olds. And we can see that here. If you remember, glutathione is comprised of three amino acids, cysteine, glycine, and glutamate, or glutamic acid. And when looking at the fold change and the p-value and FDR, we can see that these are all higher and significantly higher in the centenarians when compared with the group that was 30 years younger. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. 
Thanks for watching. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.